The following program contains naughty bits. But before each naughty bit comes on the screen, you'll hear this warning sound. And now, Thames Television brings you the program that's bigger than this. More daring than this. Hotter than this. More exciting than this. Thames Television brings you the test card. Hi, folks. Welcome to the Kenny Everett Video Show. It's gonna be great. We've got the videotapes. We've got the machine to show them on. It's gonna be fab. And video, as you know, is Latin for I see. And that's what this show is all about. We're gonna bring you tons of stuff that you can see. Radio will be a thing of the past. And now, stand by to see our first viewing item. Eyeballs at the ready, start viewing now! Mayfair here. Now look, this brazen suggestive dancing is the most shocking thing I've seen since the Chelsea Flower Show, <laughs> when two peonies started pollinating in public. <laughs> <laughs> and now, it is me, Marcel Wave from Paris. I'm French, you know. 
I think this show is so very, very nutty. I love it. Oh, uh, it is so nutty. Oh, you say downright rude. I think this Everett fellow has the right idea surrounding himself with sexy young girls. They are so lovely. I knew one of them once. Or was it twice? <laughs> Now, dear viewers, witness a miracle of modern television as this sparrow-limbed, bird-brained disc jockey slowly changes into a six-foot-eight mound of muscle. <laughs> Here I am, starring in... <laughs> and now, Intercontinental Ballistic Enterprises present an associated multinational production. Captain, Captain Crennan. Crennan. The world's most fabulous man. Hi, kids. Welcome to episode two, series five, volume nine, part six, book one of an adventure so bold and staggering, it makes Star Wars look like a Tony Blackburn home movie. On the bridge of the Troll One, heading out into the inky blackness of space once more. Stardate 49 stroke 384. Hi, Captain. I brung you some hot bovril oh. full of beefy goodness. That's Carla. She's my right arm. Shaped a little better. Well, Carla, here we are at the bridge of my mighty nuclear-powered spaceship again, thrusting forward. Mm, that last adventure was so terrific. You'll have to go some to beat it this time. Carla, this is no joyride. The boss says things are too quiet out here in space, and that's always a sign of danger. Hi, Captain. Hi, Gonad. How's it going up here on the bridge? Well, that's a bit quiet at the moment. How are things down in the crew's quarters? Well, most of the crew are asleep. Asleep? Yeah. The Max Bygrave shows on television. Plastic Max, huh? Yeah. Here, huh? take this videotape and watch it instead. Oh, what is it? It's the entire history of the whole world, with all the nasty bits taken out. Uh, how long does it run? About 27 seconds. I'll get it, Captain. Hello, to whom am I speaking at? Oh. It's for you, Captain. Tar. Hello? Hi, Captain. Sparks here. We're having a little trouble with the generator. Oh? What kind of trouble? Well, for no apparent reason, we're losing power. <gasps> well, space fans, it's only episode one, but our trusty crew are up against it already. Find out how they escape in the next fab adventure of Captain Cremens. You know, I sometimes think that life is like Brit Eklund. Lots of ups and downs, but rather overrated, really. You know, plebs, there's often, there's often real pain behind a happy mask of comedy. My mum's divorcing my dad, you know, a terrible thing, especially in a large family like ours. But my mum's determined. She's convinced that the last three kids weren't hers. <laughs> Do you know, I cried so much last night. My mum and dad put me somewhere else to sleep. You know, that little light does go out when you shut the fridge door. Yeah, there you are, Clifford. Have we got a surprise for you? Oh, Kenny, don't tell me. You've not dug up one of those old clips, have you, mate? Why Constant. don't you like them? I can't bear it. I mean, I look so terrible in those days. I, I, I look so great now. I mean, I've had the barnet done, the teeth. I look taller. New socks. I mean, you know, I'd, I'd rather <laughs> see myself now than then, mate. Oh, you're out of luck, kid. Oh. Here comes that old clip. Rock and roll. You're right, you know, you do look better now. Kenny, I told you, I don't know why you can't. Here I am in my Walls family brick to bring you a piece of reality. You remember reality? Look away from the TV. There it is. Now, back to the TV. Here's something that's actually real and really actual. Forget it, if you're, a, if you're a fast driver, slow down, because this is the latest thing in the police department to check your speed. It's a radar gun, and they're actually using these right now. So if you're speeding and watching this program, forget it. They're round the corner waiting for you. All they've got to do is press the trigger, and a digital readout gives the speed of your car. Where will it all lead?
Je ne regrette rien. Je ne regrette rien. I love my little esoterics. You know, I love my guitar. Does it not remind you of the female form? That, that beautiful waist, those lovely hips, and that beautiful back. <laughs> Interesting. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Bernard Manning. Thank you, Kenny. What a lovely boy. I've never known a man so unaffected by constant failure. <laughs> this father's father, a bald head. He makes it when you have a transplant, he says, look worse than a kidney on me head. Big gang of fellas running down the road. The fella said, what's up? This is a lion escaped. Which way did it go? He said, you don't think we're chasing it, do you? <laughs> two Jews walking through Glasgow. The big gang of these skinheads go walking towards me. He said, look at these. We're going to get mugged here, Morris. He said, I think we are. He said, I'm sure we are. Anyway, he said, here's a hundred quid here, you. <laughs> this Irish fellow went to the opticians and I broke my glasses, sir. He said, it's Friday night. I can't know much about it now. So he boarded them up on Monday morning. <laughs> Irish Working Men's Club went on a mystery tour and they had a sweep to guess where he was going. And the driver won 53 quid. <laughs> you have a good laugh, there's not much to laugh at these days. If you ever get downhearted or depressed, remember the words of this very famous man who had been there. It's easy enough to be pleasant when the world rolls along like a song, but a man's worthwhile if he can smile when everything's going wrong. Adolf Hitler, 1945. <laughs> Happy days in this business, but this won't go in the scrapbook, I'll tell you that. All the best, Kenny. I've never worked with trainee clocks before. Was it cold in the ground this morning? It's like watching a coffin walk. My regards to Tommy Trinder, about as funny as rabies in a guy got Commercial time. I tore this advert out of a, an American magazine the other day. I just couldn't believe it. Take a look at this. It says here. When your worst nightmare becomes real and suddenly you're face to face with a mugger, you don't need a gun. It says, nothing is like it for sure protection against muggers, rapists and maniacs. And across the page, it's a steel bolt thing that you carry in your hand and when somebody mugs you, you go, Foot, and a great steel bolt rushes out and you do them over with it. And it says here, a full 17 inch of tempered steel strikes down your assailant with the force of a deadly cobra. Mere flesh and blood cannot stand up to the excruciating pain that follows. Of course, this kind of stuff is all right for Americans, but here in Britain, ingenuity rules. There are cleverer things afoot than swinging steel. Since the beginning of time, man has devised weapons to protect himself. And now, at last, through the miracle of modern science and invention, the British brain has come up with the ultimate weapon, finger power. Throughout history, men have utilized the finger with incredible effect. The secret art of finger power was known only to the few, but those few have ruled the world. Winston Churchill unraveled the secret of finger power, used two, and conquered Hitler's hordes. Yes, power, fame, and fortune came to many, and always through the finger. And now, at last, the secret is available to the masses. Yes, folks, even I've got it. This seven-stone weakling is now a seven-stone monster. Yes, it's get your own back time. We took our cameras out to an ordinary, typical street in search of bullies. Here we are, folks, in an ordinary wrestling ring, on an ordinary street, in an ordinary town, to demonstrate the dynamic capabilities of finger power! That was the comparatively simple belly-bouncing temple thrust. 
can do other moves with my magnificent method. Like the triple-wristed quarter Nelson with double-thrusted Dubry. But first, a quick pump. One must keep one's working parts in good order. Ah! The temptation to misuse power finger is always there, but you must resist it and not do naughty things with it, like this. Naughty trick. seen what you can do with incredible finger power. But with two, you can do the overhand Hooja fling. I got myself a crying, talking, sleeping, walking, living dog. Thanks, Cliff. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move right along in the show. I haven't, I haven't finished, Ken. Yes, you have. Oh, yes. listen, mate, there's more to we... the song. Listen, we've got big, big superstars coming on. <laughs> big. <laughs> big. <laughs> <laughs> and now over to him. Hi, kids. Kremen here. Remember last time the boss of Star Corps told me things were a little too quiet out in space? So I grabbed my trusty crew and blasted off into the inky blackness. Suddenly, for no apparent reason, without warning, inexplicably, and I don't know why either, Troll One began losing power. Losing power? <laughs> but that's power. impossible. <laughs> Try oh. cool it, crew. <laughs> Try switching to. <laughs> Shut up! Try switching to auxiliary. It's no good, Captain. We're losing that too. Suddenly, as we spoke, the lights in the ship, together with all the displays and readouts, plus the engine, ground to a dark and quiet halt. This is madness. Well, you know what they say, Carla. AC come, AC go. But a, a ship as modern and, and as nuclear as this one having a power failure, it's unheard of. Here, Gonad, pass me a candle and match from the emergency pack. Okay, Captain, here they are. Thanks. Here, Captain, let me light it. Okay. There, now we can all see what we're doing. Carla looked so beautiful in the candlelight. But then, she is the world's most voluptuous woman. She's so sexy, hormones take her. Gee, Carla, you look even more delicious and voluptuous by candlelight. Those lips, those eyes, that tooth. Suddenly, hey, look at that. the whole cabin was bathed in an eerie green glow as through the porthole we saw a huge thing floating past us. What is it, Captain? What is it? I don't know, but it's heading straight for planet Earth. Is it a rocket? Is it a shooting star? Is it a meteor? Well, it's definitely not Superman. It's not wearing a figure-hugging elastic body. Body stocking. Captain, I would say it's about 50 miles across. It must be an asteroid. This smacks of urgentness. Carla, mm -hmm. get me Earth on the phone. Okay, Captain. If that thing scores a direct hit on planet Earth, Carla, it'll do more damage than Radio 1. Captain. Yes, Foonman? I, I just got this telex for base. Uh-huh. The meteor passed within a hundred miles of Earth. Wow. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Now we can relax. Carla, hmm? want to join me in the Relaxatron? Oh, Giddy, giddy. Tune in next time, friends, as the ghostly glowing green glob of gunge wreaks havoc in the next episode of Captain Kremen. 
Did you hear the one about the Irish water polo team? All the horses drowned. <laughs> and now we bring you 32nd Theatre. This week's episode is called Appointment with Death. Barry Tone, airline pilot, is incensed with fury over his girlfriend Gail Force's affair with the milkman. Take that! <laughs> <laughs> I accuse you of a heinous crime. What do you plead? But before you can say Tom Atawakatangi, Barry jumps from the witness stand out of the door and into a waiting jag. <laughs> Appointment with Death, brought to you by 30 Second Theater, specially written for people in a hurry. Got myself a crying off. <laughs> <laughs> now, we bring you a star of such mega magnitude, you won't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy the Dancing Bucket! Well, Billy, do your stuff. <laughs> thank you, bucket lovers everywhere. Thank you, thank you, I love you. <laughs> oh! Hello, Sid's not here. I've got a new bird. Real Debbie number, you know what I mean? Says, absolutely. When all she means is bleeding, yes. <laughs> Calls me a bit of rough, says I'm uncouth. I mean, where does she get off thinking that? I took her to the ballot, you know, to the opera, took her to a real play. Oh, what's she mean, bleeding uncouth? Here, you know, in ballet, they all walk about on their toes all the time. Beats me why he didn't get taller people in the first place. <laughs> Hi, space fans. Kremen again. Remember last time, after the meteor had narrowly avoided Earth, Carla and I were recuperating in the Relaxatron. Oh. 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 Little did we know that as we writhed in computerized bliss, back on Earth, something heinous had happened. Original boozing kid here. Since the asteroid passed by planet Earth a few days ago, strange happenings have been reported. Here's our science's correspondent. It's true, folks. Here's a model of planet Earth, and here's a model of the magnetic layer that surrounds it, and here's a model of the 50-mile-wide asteroid that passed us by. It seems that the asteroid has disturbed the magnetic layer and caused plant life all over the world to go crazy. Some reports indicate that fruit and vegetables are growing to alarming proportions. He was right, folks. We looked out of the porthole of our ship. Wow, Captain! What? Look down there! A cucumber that's three miles long! Careful, Carla. It may be a plant. Doctor? Yeah, Captain? I'm gonna take a closer look. Give me warp factor three. Warp factor three! Golly, Captain. Imagine it. A world full of rampaging vegetables. Oh! I mean, how do you reason with a ten-ton potato? You look it straight in the eye, Carla. Our craft edged slowly into a majestic curve over planet Earth, skimming across whole continents, until eventually we were over China. Captain, what? look! What? what? Down there! <gasps> it's a giant banana on the rampage! Oh, good heavens, it's huge! Captain! What is it, Foonman? Sensors indicate that the giant banana is six miles high, uh -huh. weighs 400,000 tons, yeah? and is extremely hungry. Yes, Captain, look! Down there between Kowloon and Hong Kong! My goodness, it's eating Hong Kong! It's eating Shanghai! It's eating Peking! What are we gonna do, Captain? Wait two hours, then it'll be hungry again. You know how it is with Chinese food. Foodman? Yeah? Head for Washington. That giant banana's wreaking havoc. I want to arrange a meeting with the world powers. Okay, Captain. Tune in next time, space freaks, and hear your doobry go ping in the next gripping installment of Captain Kremen. Two bottles of milk on a doorstep with a little container of cream. And the first one said, yeah, where did that come from? And the other one said, don't look at me, I'm sterilized. <laughs> oh, the hell with it. Let's have Star Quiz. <laughs>
And now, it's time to play Star Quiz, television's newest game featuring the country's top stars the way you want to see them. And here's Kenny! Hi, kids, and welcome to Star Quiz, the only show on television that takes the country's top stars and completely humiliates them. Tonight's guest star is a man known to millions and loved by millions, a warm, humble, and extremely talented person who tonight is going to get his on Star Quiz. And here he is, the one and only Michael Asbury! It's really great to have you here. But why are you sitting under the guns tube? He's much too nice to get the guns, isn't he? Yeah. Yes, quite right. And I've had my hair done, so watch it, please. Tell you what, Mike, I'm going to give you really easy questions so you can beat the guns, because no one as good-looking as you should ever be tampered with in any way. Mm, that's what I told you in the dressing room, but it didn't stop me. <laughs> More of that later. And now, for you at home, here's tonight's secret word. And the secret word is anathema. Anathema. Okay, Mike, here's the first question. And to make it even easier, it's in mime, just like that well-known program you do, whatever it's called. Give us a clue. I'm helping you all I can here, Mike. All right, right. here goes. Hold these. Uh, Red Indian, uh, how? How could you believe me when I say I love you when you know I've been a liar all my life? He's right! I think this show's rigged. Mm. <laughs> and now, the second question. And it's even easier than the first. It goes like this. Lips. Pucker. A pucker, a, a, a pucker lips now. Right! He's got it! He's got it! He's got it! He's got it! Oh, isn't it sickening? <laughs> and now, the third and final question. And for this one, I'm going to need the help of one of my lovely assistants. Come in, Carol! Ready? Right, here we go. Uh, five words, a book, and a film. A small word, uh, A, A, A. Tale of Two Cities. Right, he's got it! He's answered all three questions correctly, gained the maximum ten points on each one, but has he got the 31 points required to win? Oh, Daddy Poos! He's missed by one point, and he never even said the secret word, which you all want to know is anathema. What are we going to do? He's too nice and need to get the gunge. Tell you what, telephone us right now on this number, 011-243-748-306855, etc. If you want to save Michael from the gunge, don't worry, Mike, it's going to be great. Your fans will save you. Ring now! They've let you down. He loses. Give him the guns. Star Quiz. Well, that's it from Star Quiz for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. <laughs> I knew he'd lose. And now, the weather forecast. <laughs> All right, so it was funny. Enjoyment isn't everything. <laughs> Hello, Sid Snot here. I was down at park the other day, feeding the pigeons to my cat. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to part two, in which Agatha has another row with Rodney and angrily stamps her foot, and then angrily posts it. <laughs> well, that's the end of that gag. And it's the end of me under this shirt, I think. My great bulging hurry chest's been replaced by the Thames naughty bit. Let them records roll, 10-4.
stop this heathenness. It's too tanny on me. It's too hot and wobbly. Stop, do you hear? <laughs> Next time, it's the boiling red. Don't you just love a happy ending? Hi, I'm Tinsel Man, fighter of true causes and the cause of many fights. But what care I of fools and fortunes? <laughs> I'm here on your planet in your hour of need to make the world a prettier place. Yes, thanks to my wonderfulness and my magic tinsel, here in the tinsel pouch, <laughs> ugliness will disappear forever and everything will just be Gucci poo. <laughs> Sounds like the bracelet phone. <laughs> oh, wow, tinsel man. Oh, no, you're kidding. <laughs> oh, golly, sounds like a job for wonderful me. Down, down, and away. <laughs> oh, come on, tinsel man, pull yourself together. <laughs> Ugly, ugly, drabby poos. Look at all those mucky shoes. To the tinsel pouch we scurry. To transform them in a hurry. The world should be pretty. And now to my next assignment. <laughs> he sequins here, he sequins there. He throws his sequins everywhere. Oh. Life is such a gay world for us superheroes. <laughs> oh no, something else. No rest for the wonderful. <laughs> Dragonsville! <laughs> Soon fix this! Ooh, better! Better! Now you can see the lumpy bits! <laughs> Vegetable basketball here in any old street, any old tatty town to report sightings of falling tinsel. Millions of people have said this strange object zips out of the sky like a, a giant gold brillo pad. Who is he? Where is he? Here is he. Hi. Oh, ordinary. <laughs> no. Mm. Oh, much better. Bye. He sequins here, he sequins there, he throws his sequins everywhere, Tinsel Man. And remember, kiddies, if a job's well worth doing, it's a job well doing done or something. <laughs> well, I'm off now to clean up new filth and ugly nuffy poo. And remember, we're all pretty under the skin. Except me, I'm pretty everywhere. <laughs> Bye! Tinsel Man. I got myself for crying, talking, sleeping. Want mom? I want my mom. I'm nearly famous now. <laughs> Now I ask you, is that any way to treat a superstar? I feel ashamed of myself. A man like that, he's been around so many years, so enormously popular, everybody loves him. So I'd like to take this opportunity of personally apologising to him. Cliff, I apologise for that. And I can't wait for you to come back on the show so I can apologise for this. And now, Captain Crimmon of Star Corps. Bursting onto the scene with the grunge gun force of 50 megathrobs. Hi kids, Crimmon here. Remember how, in the last episode, the giant banana was rampaging across the globe, heading for New York? But I had a plan. If we evacuate New York and just have you standing alone on Brooklyn Bridge looking voluptuous, it's bound to be extremely attracted by you. And as it makes its way towards you, we'll nab it from behind. Despite Carla's red, white, and blue blood, I noticed as I spoke that she turned a peculiar white color. Are you ill? I hope so. I'd hate to feel like this if I was well. Meanwhile, the radio kept up the dreadful news. Several giant radishes have been seen south of Illinois. There will be a repeat later this evening. As the ship hurtled towards the danger zone, I checked out the crew. Well, men, this assignment will test us to our utmost limits. Yes, Captain. It's perhaps our most dangerous mission ever, men. Yes, Captain. Anyone like to back out? Yes, Captain. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Oh, Captain. Yes? Carla would like to see you in the galley. Oh, good. Say, Why? haven't I seen your face somewhere else? No, Captain. It's always been here on the front of my head. 
I made my way to the galley where Carla had been trying out her culinary skills on our nuclear-powered Arga. Oh, hi, Captain. I'm cooking you some beans. Carla, why are your ankles completely swathed in bandages? Well, it said in the instructions, to heat contents, stand in boiling water for 15 minutes. A lump went to my brain. How could an idiot be so attractive? Carla? Yes, Captain? Come here, my little cosmic cherub. Oh. Let me cuddle your heaving bosom. Oh, Captain. Before I fed her to the giant banana, I decided to give Carla one of the world's great treats. Me. Will Kremen's plan work, or will the giant banana get its just desserts? You may remember, earlier on in the show, we had to pour cold water on hot gossip, remember? Stop, do you hear? <laughs> That's because they were wobbling too much, getting over filthy, and they measured 200 decibels on the hotometer. Well, they've promised to behave now, they've had a cold shower each, and here they are, they've promised not to be naughty anymore. Somehow, I don't believe them. to you about this great country of ours, the United States of America. Some whining intellectuals have been saying it's not the great nation it once was. Pinko subversives, closet commies. They want us to listen to their progressive, liberal, faggy ideas. <laughs> well, I call on you Americans to turn a deaf ear, turn a blind eye, and then Bomb the bastards! <laughs> you will know it makes sense. We're with you, Ronnie. I like 
that? <laughs> Mr. Wave, yes? do you deny that you committed adultery on the 18th of June in a snowstorm while travelling on the pillion of a motorcycle at 110 miles an hour through Milton Keynes, while at the same time juggling a French loaf and two avocado pears and arm wrestling with a one-legged dwarf? What was that date again? <laughs> I've just been with my girlfriend Deirdre and I call her Martini. Any time, any place, anywhere. <laughs> Kremen of the Star Corps. Starring Chad Levine, Anorexia, and Matt Vinyl in The Great Cinerama Banana Drama. A gigantic six-mile-high banana was, even as I speak, striding across the Atlantic on its way to attack New York. Hello? Yeah. Captain. Yes, Doctor? The mayor of New York is on the space phone. Are you still there, Herr Mayor? Here, give it me. Thanks. Hey, Mayor. I want you to evacuate New York City. Hey, what is this already? You bunch gun bananas up there? No, but you will if you don't get everyone out of that city now. Captain, do you know what you're saying? Yes, I was listening. This is really serious, Mayor. Only yesterday, a giant orange was about to attack the city of Chicago. What happened? Fortunately, it stopped just outside. Why? It ran out of juice. <laughs> Carla? Yes, Captain? I want you to go somewhere quiet now and summon up the courage to do this act of heroism. Okay, Captain, but don't you think we're doing this too fast? I mean, can't we capture the veg now and the fruit sundae? Fear not, little Carla. Deep down, I just know that banana's yellow. Brinman? Yes, Captain? Take the controls and home in on Brooklyn Bridge. Aye, aye, sir. Our mighty ship gracefully zoomed over the Hudson River and across the bay towards the bridge. Will Kremen's plan work? Will Carla survive? Is the world saved? Send your answers on a postcard to the What Are We Going To Do Next contest, London West 1. Hi kids, and welcome to this week's Naughty Bit on the Cuddly Ken Video Show. Ready, steady, disco! <laughs>
And now it's time for Captain, Captain Crimin. Crimin. It wasn't long now before the arrival of the banana. Down below us, the city of New York looked strangely quiet as not a soul stirred. It's me. Well, Carla, have you managed to summon up enough courage to face the banana? Well, I've tried, Captain, but without avail. Okay, so wear a veil. <laughs> New York had been totally evacuated, and Carla stood alone on Brooklyn Bridge, awaiting the arrival of the six-mile-high banana. Look, Captain! What? Where? There it is, coming up over the horizon. Quick, edge the ship behind a skyscraper so it won't see us. The banana loomed over the skyline and strode into the bay. Look, it's stopping. It's spotted Carla. It's moving towards her. The banana came to a halt and leaned hungrily in Carla's direction. <coughs> it's licking its lips. <coughs> Quick, lock lasers in position. Lasers in position. We moved slowly into the firing line. Prime photon bullets. Photon bullets primed. By the look on that banana's face, Doc, mm? I'd say it liked Carla. Hmm, I think Carla likes the banana. Engage Thron Banks. Thron Banks engaged. <coughs> Quick, Captain! It's reaching down to her! Quick as a flash, I threw the ship into hyperdrive, shot out from behind the building, and... Fire one! Fire two! Two direct hits. The banana lurched to one side, groaning. Quick, Doc! Home in on Carter and pick her up! Yamming, Captain! With a soul-tearing groan, the banana finally keeled over and fell headlong into the Hudson. Uh... NBC News, Milton Thread reporting. Teams of navvies have been employed to drag the wounded banana to dry land. Then, with the aid of hundreds of mobile tower cranes, take it to New York City Hospital, where a team of surgeons led by Dr. Heinrich von Gittfinger are operating on this weird creature even now. Carla and I were back at the offices of Star Corps, patting each other on the back. Oh, oh. Up a bit, down a bit. Yeah. Up oh. a bit. Oh. Oh. Have, oh. I got, have I got it? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. Well, Captain, what? reports are coming in from all over saying there's enough fruit and vegetables to feed the whole world forever. I know, that's wonderful, Carla. Ah, Doctor, did you manage to save the banana? Well, it was touch and go for a while, but eventually it pulls through. Well, that's wonderful, Doc. Any problems? Well, there is just one itsy bitsy one. What's that? I'm afraid that even though the banana is still alive, uh -huh. it will always be a cabbage. <laughs> Well, that's another nasty situation neatly tucked away, Carla. Yeah, you've saved the world again. Yeah. But you know, I always hate it when an adventure comes to an end. Oh, why is that? Because it means I gotta think of a whole new one for next week. <laughs> Partners, here we are at the Jesse Boys Ankle Bracelet Saloon. <laughs> Set them up, bartender. <laughs> Dangerine, I really needed that drink. Hey, you know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. My girl's been away for three long years, and I writ to her every day. Every single day. I writ for three years. You know what happened? She married the postman. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now present the difference between a fab pop star and a disc jockey. Pan down to the shoes. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> okay, back up for the it's sketch. It's true, it's true. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the real Cliff Richard. <laughs> you remember we had him in on New Year's Eve and we did terrible things to him, didn't we? I remember it well. Oh, we did this <laughs> and that. And then we did that. Off. And then we did the other. I want my mom. But today, oh, in response to the millions of letters we've had from his agent, we're going to let him sing the song all the way through. So, it's all yours. <laughs> 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 
Got myself a crying, talking, sleeping, walking, living dog. I got to do my best to please her just cause she's a living dog. I got her overnight and that is why she satisfies my soul. I got the one and only walking, talking, living dog. Take a look at her hair. Well, it's a real and if you don't believe what I say, just feel. Gonna lock her up in her trunk so no big hunk can steal her away from me. Got myself a crying dog and sleeping, walking, living dog. I got to do my best to please her just cause she's a living dog. I got her overnight and that is why she satisfies my soul. I got the one and only. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And if you've enjoyed it half as much as we have, then we've enjoyed it twice as much as you. But now it's time to turn the cameras off and kiss the crew goodnight. We've had a song, a laugh, a dance. We've even had a fight. And if you thought the show was fun, we'd like you all to send your checks and all your credit cards to Thames TV, the end. <laughs> program